Hey everybody, in this lesson we're going to talk about atomic theory. So now in Science 9, you learned about atomic theory in terms of the history of it. So we're going to go into that, a brief review of that, but we want to go and talk more in depth about certain things. So what is the difference between an element and a compound? So what an element is, an element is a pure substance. That cannot be broken down into a simpler substance. So, for example, we have oxygen gas. Oxygen gas cannot be broken down into a simpler substance. Another one, copper metal cannot be broken down into a simpler substance. While compounds, on the other hand, compounds are pure substances that are composed of two or more different atoms combined. So an example of this would be, for example, H2O or NaCl. These are still pure substances, but they're made up of now two types. Because how they're different from elements is that you could break apart NaCl and get sodium and chlorine out. Those are elements. All right. Now, some of you might go, well, can we break down these elements some more and get our, el our electrons, protons, and neutrons? Yes, but they're no longer substances. Those things are not what we call substances. Then what is the atomic theory then? The atomic theory is basically a theory on the structure and makeup of an atom. And we know that these atoms are made up of subatomic particles. And you might remember that the discoverers of these particles, such as, for example, we have Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford, Bohr, and Chadwick were instrumental in these, um, these subatomic particles. So what are these subatomic particles? So what these subatomic particles are, are protons, neutrons, electrons. And we have various symbols for them. The proton, is, the symbol is P plus. The neutron is N with a zero. And then the electron is E Minus. And why they have these is because those are their charges, where the proton has a plus one charge. The neutrons, neutrals, has zero charge, and the electron has a minus one charge. Where they're found, the proton and neutron are both found in the nucleus, while the electron is found in the orbitals, the surrounding the nucleus. Now, we talk about relative mass because all three of these subatomic particles are very, very, very small. Their masses are very, very small. So instead, what they do is they put a relative mass. What if we're talking about electron being a one? How much larger is a proton and a neutron? Well, a proton is 1836 times larger, while a neutron is 1837 times larger. Now, these numbers are going to come into play again when we talk about radioactivity. So what is a nucleus? Well, a nucleus is the center of the atom. And it has, basically, our protons and neutrons. And because it is the center of the atom, it contains our protons and neutrons, we got to know two terms. The atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons. 
and each element has a different atomic number, thus it has a different number of protons. The atomic mass is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. It's the average of it, though, of these isotopes, we call it. And we have one more. We have electric charge. The electric charge is equal to the atomic number. Okay. Take away the number of electrons. So it's the number of protons take away the number of electrons. Now what we need to know is that in atoms, in atoms they are neutral. Atoms are neutral. Which means that the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal. But then when they're not equal, we call those ions. Ions are charged. As always, Make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.